Okay, are we ready? A go? All right, I would, uh, I would like to welcome everyone here uh, to the beginning of 2019 as we recognize National Human Trafficking Awareness Month nationally, but also uh, as we uh, recognize today, which is uh, National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Uh, before I begin, um, I'm, in just a few seconds, I'm going to ask Lieutenant Governor uh, to come up here and make some remarks, and I think she's going to read something for all of us. Uh, but before we do, Councilman Manning, you, you, you're too important to not be standing up here with us. So please, <laughs> please, please join us, um, and because uh, you're, you're so involved in this task force, and we want to make sure you're part of it. Lieutenant Governor, thank uh, you, yes, thank you, Alan. Um, I just want to start by saying thank you to General Wilson, and thank you for the members of the South Carolina Human Trafficking Task Force for compiling the report that you're going to hear about in a few minutes and bringing attention to the issues of human trafficking. As you will hear from the task force, human, traffi human trafficking is a modern day slavery. And the governor's office is committed to combating this problem. South Carolina is between Atlanta and Charlotte, two major hubs for human trafficking. We know it's happening. Here in 2018, authorities charged 13 people and closed 64 cases but we know that this number pales in comparison to what is actually going on. That's why the task force is so important for interagency data collection, increased training of law enforcement, public awareness. These are just a few of the recommendations that will help us more effectively identify and help the victims of this crime. During the session, the General Assembly, Governor McMaster and I, will support the legislation funding other reforms intended to fight human trafficking. We will also do whatever we can to bring awareness to this issue. Our First Lady, Peggy McMaster, she realizes the urgency and will be championing this cause also in 2019 and shedding light on it for everyone. <laughs> we have an amazing First Lady, yes we do. To the end, the governor has issued the proclamation I'm about to read. The governor's proclamation, whereas human trafficking is an egregious crime that impacts over 40 million lives each year throughout the world, including the United States and South Carolina, whereas victims of human trafficking, including children and adults, suffer unimaginable hardships, including the loss of their dignity their freedom and their basic rights through commercial sexual exploitation, debt bondage, involuntary servitude, forced labor, and other forms of modern day slavery. And whereas the state of South Carolina is committed to promoting the well-being of all of its residents by protecting the vulnerable through prevention and education and awareness as well as the continued efforts to support victims, investigate crimes, and prosecute traffickers. And whereas South Carolina is committed to partnering with regional and national allies to strengthen our efforts toward the elimination of human trafficking and its traumatic impact on our communities. And whereas the statewide human trafficking task force has worked to support the efforts of South Carolina stakeholders, including regional task forces and community advocates, through the promotion of their collective efforts to eradicate modern day slavery. And whereas this year's observation of Human Trafficking Awareness Month calls attention to South Carolina's commitment to individual reforms and the elimination of human trafficking in all of its oppressive forms. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim January 2019 as Human Trafficking Awareness Month throughout the state and encourage the South Carolinians to recognize the vital role that each person has in the prevention of human trafficking as well as the power of our collective, collective efforts in ending this crime in our communities. Signed by the Honorable Governor Henry McMaster. 
So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Alan and members of the task force, and they'll share their data with you. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Thanks, Governor Alan. Abbott. Appreciate you being here. <laughs> and, uh, Lieutenant Governor, I appreciate you for being here, and I know that Governor McMaster has been incredibly supportive of uh, our efforts in the task force, having been the former Attorney General and had my job prior to me, and I know that he will continue to do so, and I appreciate you for being here today. Uh, I want to thank everyone else for being here. Uh, first, uh, South Carolina has a distinct honor. Since 2012 till now, we have gone from one of the worst states in the country on how we enforce and fight and combat human trafficking to one of the best states overall in the country and how we combat and fight and deter human trafficking. And last year, we had the distinct honor of being rec uh, recognized by Shared Hope International as the most improved state in the nation for human trafficking legislation. And I was incredibly happy to hear the Lieutenant Governor say uh, that she and the Governor are going to support all the legislation and the funding uh, to help go for combating human trafficking. And a quick shout out to Catherine Moorhead, who's standing to my right as our human trafficking coordinator. She is my, um, she is the me of the human trafficking task force. She, when I can't be there, she is there running it. And this task force has grown over the last several years. And this year, we're going to be asking the General Assembly for some funding for two support staff persons to work with Catherine. So her name is Catherine Moorhead, but we're changing it to Catherine More Money because we need, <laughs> we need some funding to help her. The task force has grown from about 11 mandated state members and four federal partners to over 300 participating members, over 300 people or groups strong supporting the effort. Many are represented here today. Uh, our mandated members include the Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation, the South Carolina Police Chiefs Association, the Sheriff's Association, the State Law Enforcement Division, the Department of Health and Environmental Control, the State Office of Victims Assistance, the South Carolina Commission on Prosecution Coordination, the Department of Social Services, a representative of the Office of the Governor, a representative from the Department of Employment Workforce, SCAD VASA and SC Van are our two nonprofit members, and we also have ICE, the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, Homeland Security, and um, I believe the Department of Labor are our invited federal partners. And th this is where it started with these mandated and invited members, but then it grew, and we've developed partnerships along the way. I also want to give a special shout out to the Department of Juvenile Justice. While they are not in the law as an invited member, they have become a functional principal in the efforts to combat human trafficking and supporting the efforts of our task force. So thank you, DJJ. Um, the task force, as I said, has grown to 300 members and it has become uh, organized. We have 11 subcommittees focusing on everything from law enforcement issues and training to health care, youth advocacy, legal innovations, and so on. Uh, victims issues are also addressed. Um, we have grown from four regional task forces under the state task force to seven regional task force under our state task force, and that was just in 2018. Um, I, today, I am flanked by a lot of people. Many of them come from some of these task force members. Others come from the Office of the Attorney General. I want to thank all of you for being here today uh, because you are the voices, you're the faces, you're the people out there in the trenches every single day breathing life into the war on human trafficking. I did thank the Lieutenant Governor, but I also want to thank the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. They sent two instructors today. We have uh, three deputies with the Horry County Sheriff's Department, uh, Th Thornton Kirby who's with the South Carolina Hospital Association, one of our new partners this past year. The Hospital Association represents, what, more than 100 hospitals uh, throughout South Carolina, and they are now, the hospitals are joining the fight. Um, Rick Todd, I don't know if he made it, but he was coming. He's with the Truckers Association. You don't think about truckers, but where do you think these traffickers and the victims that, that are being peddled as prostitutes are going. They're going to the truck stops on our roadways and interstates, um, and they're approaching truckers. And so the truckers have mobilized to help us fight the war on human trafficking. Uh, now, we talked about some of the partnerships with the truckers and the hospitals association. We had seven partnerships prior to the beginning of this year. Uh, 
We, some, those include Polaris. You've heard of PolarisProject.org. You've heard of the National Association of Attorneys General, DHHS, Thorne, and there are others. But this year, we, in addition to being members, we have joined with several national and state groups who've also partnered with the State Human Trafficking Task Force. And again, it's important for you to know who these folks are. We have the National Human Trafficking and Disabilities Working Group has now joined us in our efforts to combat human trafficking. Uh, I mentioned the Truckers Association, the Hospital Association, the Indigenous Women's Alliance of South Carolina has also joined, uh, and they've already been fighting it, but now they've joined us in our efforts in fighting it. And then Erase Child Trafficking, a national nonprofit which is funded by the Lynch Foundation, uh, they are providing or helping to provide additional law enforcement training to our brothers and sisters out in the law enforcement communities out there fighting every day. Now. I've heard it said that you can't manage a problem until you measure a problem. And so some of the funding we're going to be asking for is going to enable us to better uh, manage the problem by measuring it through data collection and statistical analysis and training. But I have to provide you some of the uh, statistics. As we're required every year to give the state human trafficking report, which is um, collected throughout the year, some of the statistics have borne out the following. A majority of the reported cases are sex trafficking cases, but there is a rise in labor trafficking, and it is something that is usually overlooked. There are a lot of rural areas of South Carolina, and a lot of the um, labor trafficking comes in the form of retail and hotel and restaurant and working in the agricultural industry. There is a lot of labor trafficking out there in addition to the sex trafficking that we see so many reports about. The top five counties. Uh, have changed, uh, excuse me, the top five counties for human trafficking have not changed in being the top five, but they have been reordered based on the number of reports we've gotten through our hotline. Richland County, where we currently reside, is now the number one county for reported cases of human trafficking in South Carolina, followed by Horry County, Greenville, Charleston, and Beaufort County. Now, I don't say this to uh, rep, uh, excuse me, Councilman, to say that Richland County is doing something wrong. Frankly, I think Richland County is doing something right because they're finding it and they're going after it. And the more you look, the more you find. So I want to qualify these. These are the top five counties that are being reported. So this is so. Thank you, Richland County and the other four counties, uh, for your efforts to uh, root out human trafficking. But it just underscores the need for more attention on this horrible issue. The top reported venues over the last year for human trafficking conduct, usually being found in illicit massage parlors and spa businesses. Top relationships for human trafficking. Last year it was familial relationships. Familial relationships still remain in the top five, but employer relationships and intimate partner of the victim relationships have taken over as the top two relationships that we're seeing in the human trafficking reports. The top recruitment techniques, job offers, or offers of employment. Uh, this is someone telling someone they're going to make a lot of money or they're going to get famous. Um, this is some of the ways that we're seeing in the reports that these young people are being recruited. Uh, intimate partners and marriage promises of a marriage proposal by the uh, illicit or by the trafficker. And remember, a lot of times the trafficker and the victim have a very um, close relationship and the victim is in love with the trafficker. That is how nefarious this crime can be. Now, these are just a couple of the uh, statistics that I've given you from, from the calls and reports that we've gotten, but I want to give you a little bit of the, the court statistics. In uh, 20, leaving 2018, we currently have 20 pending human trafficking cases in state court. 20 pending cases. The majority of these are pending in Richland County, followed by Lexington and Ori, Greenwood, and Greenville counties. Last year, 64 human trafficking cases were closed. 64 human trafficking cases were closed in 2018. About half of those were closed because they were picked up uh, by the federal government because of either jurisdictional issues or resource issues. The remainder, 28% um, resulted in guilty pleas by the traffickers and, and, and the rest were due to a lack of evidence. So we are working, the men and women in law enforcement, our prosecution agencies, our victims advocacy groups, they are working overtime to bring these people into the light and to bring them to justice, and I applaud their efforts. As we go forward, you gotta look at where you've been so that you can see where you wanna go. 
Our priorities for 2019 are going to be continue to build a more comprehensive data collection system. We want to continue focusing on building quality programming and, and, and to support victims. So programming that will help support victims and train law enforcement and other organizations so that can, we can continue to build on our past successes. And we want to formalize law enforcement coordination and training as well. Again, Madam Lieutenant Governor, some of this is going to be due to the funding requests we're asking from, and so we, we're glad to know the governor will be on board with us. Um, at this time, I'm going to conclude by saying I can't be more proud of how far we've come in the last six years since we first got the human trafficking legislation passed. This is not a partisan issue. This is not a political issue. This is not an issue based on geography or where you fall in the socioeconomic system. Anybody can be a human trafficker. Anybody can be a victim. We all own the problem. Everybody here has got to be part of the solution. And that is why I'm, gl I'm glad. And, and frankly, I'm going to go ahead and deputize the media. You are now a member of the Human Trafficking Task Force. Congratulations. We're going to put you to work. Go out there and help us tell our stories. Interview these nonprofit groups. Interview these agencies. Interview these victims advocates and the law enforcement officials who can go on the record and tell their stories. Tell the stories of the victims who have been traumatized in a modern day slave trade. Um, you can really help us continue to grow our strength and our numbers and our efforts to combat and eventually eradicate modern day slavery in South Carolina. I always like to quote the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass who says, I expose slavery in this country because to expose it is to kill it. Slavery is one of those monsters of darkness to whom the light of truth is death. Isn't that what we're here for today, folks? Let's go eradicate and kill that monster. Thank you so much for being here today. and. Uh, We'll be happy to do uh, interviews off to the side. Are there any questions? Do you do you want to you want to talk about come out current future legislation? Do you have any? There, there are yeah, some ahead. there are some uh, that have been proposed. I know that. Um, some bills that are focused on um, the expungement of, of crimes uh, for minor victims. Um, I know that there's um, also I'm trying to remember all recommendations by shared hope. Rec yes, recommendation by shared hope. Um, so we want to look at declaring that South Carolina is against sex tourism. Uh, we want to make that very clear to those who are tourists that are visiting our, our state. Um, we're also taking a look moving forward at targeting increasing sentencing, perhaps not this year, but sentencing for those who target individuals with disabilities. Um, recently, we've heard of some pretty horrendous uh, cases in which uh, disabled people have been targeted as victims. So that's something we're looking at in the future as well. It's, remember, we have a multi-billion dollar tourism industry. A lot of people are coming to this state. And on top of that, South Carolina since, sits nestled between two of the top 20 human trafficking hubs in the country, between Charlotte and Atlanta. You look at the I-85 corridor, that's an artery for human trafficking. You look at the I-95 corridor, especially to the rural areas, the corridor of shame, a lot of vulnerable people are there who are being preyed upon, and that's something I didn't emphasize earlier. We, the report goes into detail about the vulnerability of the victims. Usually it could be, a, a, it could be mental health, it could be socioeconomic status, it could be they're in poverty, it could be their uh, status as an immigrant. They're, they're, not, they're undocumented, they're here, and they're being preyed upon too. So there are a lot of reasons that are leading and feeding, rather, uh, the victimization of certain groups. But that is something that we really need to shine a light on. And, and, the, and the funding for the people that are going to support Catherine and the other 300 groups will really help us in that endeavor. If there are no other questions, I would encourage all of you to grab someone here. I know we got the uh, hospital association. I don't know if the trucking association's here. We got some law enforcement officials, but uh, please uh, talk to these folks about their involvement. Again, thank you all for reporting this. Have a wonderful afternoon.